Tony Hawk's American Wasteland is the seventh game in a seven-year best-selling franchise. But with the need to release a new game each year, it feels like Activision sacrificed too much to get it finished. The story and playability suffer, making American Wasteland the least polished game in the series. All right, let's see what you got. Prove me wrong and the ranch is all yours. Wasteland pits you as an up-and-coming skater from Anytown, USA, hoping to make it big in the skate scene of Los Angeles. You make a few friends early on who will help you in your quest to become the next Tony Hawk, but they'll stop you from completing your goals to serve their own, which is absurd. Welcome to paradise, Chief. These punks want to turn the skate ranch, a ratty and secluded skate park tucked away in some obscure corner of the city, into the wasteland. This involves stealing large items around the city by committing homicide and grand larceny, and then somehow hauling them back to the ranch. When there's time, you can also sign up for competitions, furthering your career instead of your criminal record. The more items you pick up, the bigger the ranch gets. It's fun to see it evolve, but sometimes the story feels like a distraction from what made the previous games in the series fun, the skating. There are a lot of cinemas. You'll spend as much time watching the game as you will playing it. Scattered in between these are tasks given to you by bad ethnic stereotypes that teach you the basic moves. Your body is strong, but is your mind of equal strength? The instructions for some of the newer moves are a bit vague, which will frustrate new users. It's also annoying for seasoned veterans of the franchise who want to jump right in from the start instead of having to be taught all over again. The biggest change to the Tony Hawk universe this year is the ability to go anywhere you want at any time. What began as a series of courses and trick areas has evolved into an open city-wide skate park. The biggest bonus this brings to the franchise is the ability to keep traveling as you build up an unlimited amount of trick and rail combos. There are a few new additions to the controls, like Nada Spins, the Disaster, the Rail Stall, and the Burt, a shout out to the Days of Dogtown. Flips and rolls have been made easier this year and are no longer special moves. You're free to grab and rotate on the y-axis when performing these moves, which can make for some pretty sick aerial maneuvers. And the more you build up your tricks, the more you can focus the camera and slow down time. Bike enthusiasts can meet up with Matt Hoffman and two-wheel it in familiar but slightly unstable control. The story mode requires you to ride a bike temporarily, but if you're planning on sticking to your board, the new bike feature is mostly optional. Opening the world up this year means the areas lack the level of detail in Underground 1 and 2. It feels like what you see is what you get, where in previous years half the fun was suddenly discovering new paths and surprises. The environments don't connect as clearly as they did in previous games. The Tony Hawk franchise was established on some of the smoothest sports gameplay on the market, and American Wasteland feels a little rough. Unfortunately, corners must be cut in order to eliminate the loading time in a game world this big. You have to skate through load tunnels in between the bigger environments, but the city is mostly seamless. The character textures look good, even if the models are a bit blocky, and the customization options are extensive. But beyond that, the game is riddled with glitches. Everything from dropped frames when landing a trick, to buggy scripted events, to the game freezing up completely. Your character will bump into things and bounce off in odd ways, cutscenes are drawn out and poorly animated, the lip movement doesn't match the dialogue, and sometimes, neither do the subtitles. You gonna dazzle me with your stale moves? The different areas of Los Angeles are, at best, loose representations of the real-life neighborhoods, and none of them are terribly interesting to skate. They feel smaller than the levels in previous Hawk games, although the overall world is larger. You can grind from one ledge to another, manual in between, and build up endless combos, but it's tough to get a sense of satisfaction after doing so. If you don't care for the new design, you can return to some old school levels from Pro Skater's past in classic mode. 
they have only been upgraded visually, leaving the same layout that many Hawk veterans have memorized. Tony Hawk's American Wasteland feels rushed. It brings some new moves to the table, resurrects some old favorite levels, and finally delivers Xbox Live support. But these goodies are not good enough to forgive sloppy design, an absurd story, dull and frustrating missions, and gameplay that isn't as much fun as it used to be.